Okay. So, right, the last thing we looked at was um, figuring out how many outcomes, right? Uh, when, when we're given different events, how many outcomes can we get, right? And remember, to find that is this, this equation right here. So the total outcomes, right, is the number of options we have for event one, the number of times the number of options for event two, times the number of options for event three, and so on. Depending on how many events, right, we call them just events, but these events could be, um, right, rolling, rolling two different uh, dice, or number of um, different kinds of choices for making pizzas, right? So that is the last thing we looked at. And then we looked at, right, the two different ways that we can represent uh, them, right? A tree and a table. So now we're going to talk about dependent and independent events. Right, so independence and an independent event or independent events is where the first one, right, the first event does not affect the second. Right, so the total possible outcomes remains the same. Right, so if you think of uh, an independent event, right, if we're drawing, if we're drawing cards from a deck. Right, so if you if you draw a card, record your result, and then replace the card before drawing another, does your second does the uh, card that you're going to draw on your second um, attempt depend on the first card you drew? No, it does not because you replace the card. There's still the same. The possible outcomes is still 52. Right and um, the probability is still remains the same, right? So if you draw a card, record it, and then replace the card, right? When you draw a second, it doesn't matter. The first, the first card you drew doesn't matter because you replaced it, right? So it doesn't change anything, right? And again, if you roll a dice, rolling a dice does not affect the total outcomes for the second roll, right? So if you roll a dice five times, Right, the number that you roll on the first time, the, the first roll doesn't affect the number that you roll on the fifth roll. Right, they're independent events. And the opposite of that would be, right, dependent events. Right, so the important thing to note here for independent events is that replacement. Right, so if you ever see a, uh, a question where, right, for example, you draw a card and then you replace that card right, then you should be thinking, right, that means that we have, we're dealing with independent events, right, replacement means independence, and then for dependent events, right, the first event affects the total number of outcomes for the second event, right, so the keyword here is for, right, no replacement, right, so we're thinking of when cards, marbles, candies, or whatever that we're, we're dealing with are not being returned, after being drawn or picked out of a bag, right? It's going to affect the total number of outcomes that you can choose for your second marble that you pick out, right? And if we don't replace that one, it affects the third marble that you pick out, right? Because we're taking away outcomes as we go through, right? So uh, another example would be if your teacher picks a random student to come to the front of the class, the chances of you being picked next increase since the number of students, uh, since the number of students remaining is decreasing, right? So, say if I want to uh, pick each person, right, and I want to pick each person once, right? So, if I pick pick Alexis to come up to the front, right, and then, right, the probability that the right, so now I'm not going to pick the same student again. So, the probability that you, someone other than Alexis, is going to get picked. Right, goes up because now um, that student isn't an outcome anymore. Does that make sense? So dependent events, right, depends on what you've previously done before. 
right? So if we look at this example here, looking at a bag of marbles has three red, five blue, and two green marbles, right? So if a blue mar, so a lot of these are going to be dealing with not replaced and replaced. So if a marble is chosen and not replaced, right? So not replaced. Right, that means we're dealing with a dependent scenario, right? So we're dealing with dependent event events here. What is the probability of drawing uh, a red marble next? Right, so how many total marbles do we have? One, two, three. Well, we can add them up or just count them, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten total in the bag at the start. And we have three red, five blue, and two green. So if a blue marble is chosen and not replaced, how many do we have left? So we have, we had 10, we took the red one out, or sort of the blue one out, now we have nine total. We have nine marbles remaining. So now our new total is nine for a second marble that we're gonna draw. And now we want the probability of drawing a red marble next. Well, how many red marbles? Was the first marble that we chose a red? No. So we still have three red marbles to choose from. So the probability of the next one being a red, right? We have three red marbles to choose from still, but we have nine marbles left. Right, so this minus one here is the blue, sorry, I didn't leave that much space, but that's the blue marble we took. That's the blue marble we took out and didn't put back. So part B, if a blue marble is, so we're choosing a blue marble again, but is not replaced. So again, we're dealing with a de dependent situation here. Let's take the probability of drawing another blue marble, right? Well, we have, right, still nine. So we took out a marble again and didn't replace it. So now we still, uh, we have nine total for our second marble that we're going to draw. But now we want to state the probability of drawing another blue marble. So the probability of another blue marble remaining. Well, we took a blue marble out and did not replace it. So we had four mar so we have five blue marbles total. We took one out and did not replace it. So we have five minus one equals four blue marbles left. Right, because we're drawing, we want the probability of, that the second one is also blue marble. Right, so we have four now to choose from. So the probability would be four over nine. Right, so for example, this picture here, right, so we drew a red marble sorry, a blue marble, so, right, we cross that out, and now this is, everything that's not X'd out is what's remaining in the second, in the bag for the second, uh, the second marble we're gonna draw, right? And same thing here, that's what's remaining, we still drew a blue marble, that's what's remaining for, in the bag on our second draw. Right, part C, if a red marble is chosen and replaced, what is the probability of choosing another red marble? Right, well, we just replaced it, right? So the first draw and the second draw are independent. Right, so first and second draw are independent. So the probability 
of drawing another red marble would just be, right, how many red marbles do we have? Three over our original total, right? What was in the bag originally? Any questions on the, the, these first three? Okay, so, right, if a green marble is drawn and not returned to the bag, what is the probability of drawing another green? Right, so we're not returning the marble, right, so we have 10 total, we're taking one out, so we have nine remaining. Right, so that's our new total. And we want to find the probability of drawing another green marble, right? So we had one, two, two green marbles, we took one out and did not replace it. So we have one, one green remaining. So the probability of our next marble being green again is one over nine. If a blue marble is chosen first, right? So we have a blue marble being chosen first. Now we're choosing a green marble um, is chosen and not replaced. So both are not replaced. So we choose a blue marble first and a green marble, and they're both not replaced. What is the probability of drawing a red marble on the third draw? So now we're on the third draw now. So how many marbles did we take out? Right, we had 10 total. We removed two, right, and did not replace them. So we have eight remaining. Right, we have eight remaining marbles. And we want the probability of drawing a red on the third draw. Well, our first marble was a blue. And our second marble was a green. And now we want the probability of drawing a red marble. Well, how many marbles do we still, how many marbles do we have in our bag? We haven't taken any out yet, so we still have three. Three red. Right, there's still three red uh, marbles remaining. Right, so the probability of choosing a red would be three over eight. Any questions on this one? Right, so essentially I can ask you, right, you draw, I can give you the first nine draws, or say I can give you the first eight marbles that you drew and then ask you the probability of drawing uh, a certain colored marble on your ninth draw, if you replace or don't replace. So if a red marble is chosen, so again, we're choosing two marbles, a red marble is chosen first and a green marble is chosen second and both are not replaced what is the probability of drawing a red marble on the third draw right so again we have 10 we're taking away two so we have eight remaining and then we want the probability of drawing a red marble on the third draw well we we drew one and did not replace it and then our and then we drew a green and did not replace it but we drew one red marble so we had three, and we took away one and didn't replace it. So we have two red, we have two red marbles remaining. Right, so the probability of choosing a red marble on our third draw would be two over eight. Now we're choosing, again, three we want on our third draw, but this time we choose a green marble and then another green 
and they're both returned. We want the probability of drawing another green marble on the third draw, right? Well, we return them, right? So each draw is independent. So essentially the first two draws don't affect the third one, right? So we have the probability of drawing a green, right? We still have two. Right, so now we're just looking at what, what was in the bag originally over 10 because we just replaced the marbles each time. Any questions on this example here? All right, so let's do a deck of cards example. Right, so this is in this is in your uh, notes at the beginning, right? But just a reminder, right? It's here as well, and we want so Julia draws a card from a standard deck of cards, and without replacing it, draws another card. Right, so without replacing it, draws another card. Right, so we have no replacement, so we have a dependent scenario. Right, our second card that we're going to draw depends on our first card. So the probability of drawing a spade, a spades card, if the first card was a four of diamonds. Right, so this is again why you can see it's important to know and if you, right or to have uh, have something on your study sheet that kind of summarizes this, so that you know how to answer these questions. Right, because you don't want to get uh, get a question wrong when you know how to do it, but it's just that you don't know the a standard deck of cards, right? So we want to know the probability of drawing a spades card on our second draw if the first one was a four of diamonds. How many spades are there, right? There's thirteen of each suit, right? So there's thirteen spades. There's 13 spades remaining. We didn't choose, we chose a four diamond, so we still have 13. And there's 50, right? So there's 52 cards total in a standard deck, but we took away one and didn't replace it. So we have 51 total cards remaining. So our probability of the second draw being a spade is 13 over 51. The probability of drawing a face card, if the first card was a queen of spades. Right, so how many total face cards are there? There's 12. I don't know if you see that, but that says 12. So there's 12 in a total deck, and we chose a queen of spades, right? A queen is a face card. So we took away one, so now we have 11 remaining face cards, right? And we still have 51 cards. So this all, all these parts were not replacing that first card that we chose. So the probability of choosing a face card is 11 over 51. So the probability of drawing a black card, if the first card was a king of spades, right? So there's 26 black cards, right? So the, each, the 52 are split up into red and black cards. There's 26 black cards. Is the is a king of spades a black card? Yeah, so, right, these top two rows are black cards. So the king of spades was one of those black cards. So now we have 25 uh, black cards remaining. So the 
probability of drawing another black card would be 25 over 50. And then for part D here, we're drawing the prob or we want to know the probability of drawing a black jack. If the first card was a black jack. So there's two black jacks, right? There's a jack of clubs and a jack of spades. Our first card was a was one of those. And we didn't replace it, so we only have one black jack remaining. So the probability of drawing another one, right? Well, there's only one remaining out of the 51. So it'd be one over 51. 